Yo guys, what is up? Max in our Power World video, and today we're going over 10 things that you probably don't know about Power World. These are going to be things that the game just doesn't tell you. Uh, this isn't going to be like a tips or tricks video. These are going to be things legitimately that after over 100 hours of playing the game, uh, I still didn't know a lot of these things on this list. A lot of them have been told to me by viewers, and I wanted to share them with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get right into it. Before we dive into the list, I do have a bit of an announcement. I just launched a Moxie plush. Uh, this is a limited edition plushie. It's basically going to be live for 13 days and then it goes away forever. Uh, I've been working on this plushie with U2s who just launched it. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a bit bigger than my head. It's got a little hoodie on that says Damage Nation uh, and it's pretty awesome. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description and the pinned comment where you can go pick one up for yourself. So the first thing that you probably didn't know is how to quick revive pals. Now, I've currently got an Anubis in my party that has fainted. You can see that he's incapacitated in his status. Um, and if I wanted to revive him, I could either get into bed if it's nighttime and fall asleep with that pal, he'll revive. I could also put this pal in the pal box uh, and he will revive. But if you have, so I put him here, he's got basically 10 minutes to revive that I would have to wait. However, if you put your pal in your pal base, or if he dies in your base, if you put him in the pal box and then take him back out and put him back in the base, you can revive him. Now, what's going to happen here um, is uh, he's going to spawn dead in the base, basically. Now, if you have a pal that has transporting, uh, basically my war sect here, he's going to whatever he's doing, he's transporting here. Uh, and then as soon as he is able to... Uh, oh, someone already moved the Anubis. Basically, the Anubis just gets rescued. Uh, a text will, will pop up that says rescuing, and now that Anubis is already alive, uh, basically they're just going to bring them over, put them in bed, and then if we go to my pal box, uh, that Anubis is back alive. So if you ever need to quick revive a pal that has died, all you need to do is just put them down in your base. If they're already dead in your base, put them in the pal box, then put them down in the base, and a pal that has the ability to carry them will just bring them to a bed and they will be instantly revived. You do not need to wait for nighttime. You do not need to wait 10 minutes. Uh, and that is how you can revive pals the fastest. The next thing you might not have known, I've been playing for over 100 hours and I didn't know this until today, uh, is the quick move. Now, I've been basically going to my ore uh, and clicking move on it which will automatically just move it into this stack that it's on however if you just open up a chest or an inventory it's right bumper on xbox controller uh, it is r on keyboard and mouse you just click that button so i'm just going to hit the right bumper um and i've got some ore here that's just going to get automatically transferred i also had flame organ that gets automatically transferred uh so you can pretty easily set up boxes with certain things in them you just go up to them, hit right bumper or R, and you'll immediately move everything that has something else in the box into those stacks. Uh, I really <laughs> wish I had known that uh, a while ago, but yeah, quick little tip there. The next thing that you might not have known is how to build structures uh, basically up high or tall. Uh, I was getting a ton of questions on how I built the stairs in my base. Uh, and that answer is that anything that you want to build uh, that you're stacking multiple layers on, uh, you need support systems. So if you're going to build a stack of two stairs, you need a wall underneath between the stairs to basically connect them. Um, and that also goes for the same for building up crazy high on different structures. Uh, you're going to need a support system. So currently, um, this is my like kind of cliff top base that I've got. Uh, that is above my entire base. It allows me to build uh, a ton of extra space in an area that isn't the most spacious because I can start building vertically. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't build a support system underneath it. So basically what I did is I built a foundation. So these two foundations became um, just putting it into the rock. As long as they're touching something solid, you can build foundation on top of. Uh, and then I build walls. Uh, you can build walls on top of foundation, which can go up. And then as long as these walls are on below other foundation, uh, once you're on top of foundation, it seems like you can usually build about um, like a uh, square away. So two away, two away. So as you can see, the wall is here and I was able to build this far out and then that far out, two and two. Uh, so as long as you're building structures to support your base, um, you're able to build vertically uh, which can help you expand and make the most. I know this area looks a bit scuffed when you look at like the support system here, um, but obviously uh, I haven't done like too much with this space, but it's helped me build workbenches that I normally wouldn't be able to fit. I've got some storage crates here 
uh, that I didn't have a lot of space for now that I've like built out a ton of my base. Uh, and so that is something that I wish I had known earlier because I could have made a lot more uh, with the spaces that I had when I started and not had to move as much. The next thing I wish I knew has to do with breeding combos. Now, this is personally the best site that I've found uh, that has a simple layout to follow that's got great uh, information and that's powerworld.gg slash breeding calculator. I will have this linked in the description. Uh, but one of the things that I've been working on for the past like 10 plus hours now uh, is building a perfect Anubis. Uh, Anubis is the best crafting pal in the game. It's got four handiwork. Um, and in order to build Anubis, uh, there are so many combos. I was being told, oh, you build like uh, Pen King and Bushi. But the reality is, that it's not about grabbing certain monsters to build it. It's about grabbing what you already have and expanding on it. So, for example, I was lucky enough um, when I was scrolling through this to notice that there was pals that I already had good passives on just randomly that I could work on to grab Anubis. And then I don't have to farm a bazillion other pals hoping for a good combo. Um, so, for example... Um, I, if we keep scrolling here, I already had a Verdash that had Artisan, which gives 50% increased work speed, and I didn't have an Estagon that had a good working passive, so then I could just go out and farm Estagons. Uh, it goes for any of these pals. If you find one that has a good passive on it, um, you can find a way to build the pals that you want. A lot of the time, not every pal is as easy to build as Anubis. Uh, but you don't need to go and find specifically like a Bushi and a Pen King. Uh, you can find pals in your pal box that already have good passes and build a lot of other pals on top of that. Uh, so I wish I had known that earlier rather than just trying to catch the boss Anubis a bunch, trying to get a good passive on it. The next thing I wish I had known has to do with the grapple reset. Now, you probably know that being over encumbered in this game is one of the most annoying things possible. Uh, I've currently got... Uh, 9,000 pounds of ore on me. Uh, and when you're encumbered, you can use a grappling hook to get around, which is really, really nice. Um, but you can also reset that grappling hook. So right now I'd have to wait a like eight second cooldown basically uh, to be able to use that again, but I can just equip it and unequip it. Uh, and then I have it no more cooldown, uh, which is really, really nice because obviously you don't want to wait for the cooldown. And then now I can use the grappling hook again, and then I can unequip it and re-equip it and grappling hook around again. And this is the best way to move around encumbered. Uh, yes, you can build pals that will increase your carrying capacity, but there comes a point where you just need to move so much material that there is no chance that you would have uh, enough like pal capacity to legit carry it. Uh, and that is where using the grappling gun comes in and using the reset trick will make your life a bazillion times easier because you know it's just gonna take you a lot less time um, to get to where you need to go. The next little trick that I wish I knew because I spent about three hours trying to connect my airborne base with uh, a set of stairs is how to build a spiral staircase. Um, you can use benches um, if you go into your technology screen and then you're gonna wanna come down to the level five wooden living room furniture set, uh, you can actually build benches. Now the uh, benefit of building a bench staircase while it does look a bit scuffed i'm sure that if you guys took the time you could make a better one than i've done um but the reason it's so nice is because you don't need to connect them to anything besides themselves you can just basically build a staircase straight up with having without having to build foundations and walls and mess around with that uh, it'll save you so much time uh it is nice to have like a little a thing basically next to them that you can kind of like build somewhere that's a little bit higher that you can uh, build them up from. But being able to basically build a staircase that's straight up without needing to connect it to anything uh, helps a ton in building bases, especially if you're gonna do kind of what I did, which is expand upwards on your base so that you can have more space. The next trick that I wish I'd known, and this has the potential to get patched out by the way, just an FYI, uh, but is how to equip multiple body armors. Uh, I'm sure you're probably sick of going to a cold place and then needing to have your cold armor when you had your heat armor on uh, or vice versa. Well, you can actually equip a heat resistant armor and a cold resistant armor at the same time. Um, and then you never have to change your armor ever. This allows you to have perfect heat and cold resistance uh, so that you can go into a cold area and be fine and go into a hot area and not have to swap your armor around, not have to carry armor around with you. Now, the way that you do this is a bit weird. Um, so what you need to do is you need to have a glider in your glider glider slot. Once your glider is in your glider slot, you want to click on it. Um, so if you right click it, 
um, you're going to move it instantly out. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is have armor in your inventory. Then you left click it. Um, so this will select it and then you want to click on your armor. What this will do is it'll swap the armor with the glider and you get the full defensive benefit of doing this. So you're going to stack even more armor on your character and you get the full benefits of having dual resistances. Uh, this is amazing. And it'll also like, for example, I've been using thermal undershirts. Uh, it'll free up an accessory slot where you can put more attack or more life uh, into your trinkets. Uh, so this is very, very cool. Obviously, the big downside of this is no glider, but you do get to do this, <laughs> which is, uh, it's something. So you, you still get a little bit of the glide action, um, so you, you can still stop yourself from falling to your death. You just, you know, you're going to end up deposing. So yeah, this is definitely not something that's intentional. It will probably get removed. Uh, but if you're trying to have a little bit of fun on the game and also quality of life, uh, this is a pretty crazy trick. If you want to get extra crazy with that last one, uh, your like headpiece, you can do this with as well. Uh, so if I click on the headpiece and then click on my armor that's in my inventory, now I can get another armor. I'm assuming this works for the shield as well. Yep. So you can just stack up as much armor as you want. Uh, that's pretty crazy. You might even be able to get it to do it in the accessory slots. Uh, obviously, I just lost my hair. Uh, so that's a bit unfortunate. But technically, if you wanted to be as tanky as possible, uh, you could wear a, a, just a bunch of armor sets uh, and never really have many issues with dying. Especially if you're crafting the highest end gear uh, armor sets. That's pretty wild. Uh, I found out that today, so pretty cool. The next thing you probably didn't know has to do with some movement tech. Now, you probably knew that you could slide down hills and get a massive speed boost uh, by doing that and like basically pulling out your glider. Uh, however, what you might not have known is that you can pair that with the grapple gun for some crazy movement if you're looking to get around really quickly. Now, I'm gonna see if I can do this uh, on our first try. If not, it'll probably be edited out. So uh, what you wanna do is you wanna grapple to a surface. Uh, if you're on controller uh, or, or PC, what you wanna do is grapple. And then while you're flying towards the grapple, you're gonna cancel the grapple. For me, that's the B button. Uh, and then you're gonna want to jump and glide kind of at the same time. Uh, so it should look like this, get pulled, get your momentum. Um, didn't look as great because it's not as far of a distance. Let's see if we can do that again. We're going to try off this tree, uh, see if it looks works better. I don't have like the fully upgraded grapple, but there we go. And then we can glide and uh, we basically just gave ourselves this much distance uh, in an instant. <laughs> so uh, if you can't have ground, like obviously if you have ground to just slide down, you can just do that. But if you're on like more of a flat surface, you can grapple to a tree uh, and kind of just springboard yourself off uh, and cover a lot of distance very quickly. The next thing that you might not have known, uh, as you can see, I clearly did not know this, uh, is that stacking the same heat source doesn't actually add any heat. Uh, so maybe you had an egg that needed to be warmer and you built like seven fires around it and the egg still said that it wasn't warm enough. Uh, that is because same sources of heat do not stack heat. Uh, what you want is different sources of heat. If something really needs to be hot, uh, you want multiple sources of different sources of heat. Um, so for example, you could build a campfire and then if you need even more heat, uh, you could build something like the heater and then you'd have even additional heat. Um, and uh, that's kind of, I mean, those are the two big main ones. Uh, but if something is cold, building a bajillion campfires next to it isn't going to increase the heating or the incubation times of the egg. Uh, if you're looking for efficient egg incubating, uh, you're going to want to have the eggs inside, have a heat source near them. And if you're going to have uh, something that needs even more heat than a single campfire, you're going to want to build the heater or other sources of fire or warmth uh, to keep them hot because uh, more campfires or more heaters does not actually add anything. The next thing that I wish I knew has to do with efficient farming of PAL materials uh, for breeding. Now, one of my big frustrations when I was starting to get into breeding, uh, you need to build cakes 
to be able to breed. Uh, and that requires perishable ingredients. You need milk, eggs, honey, berry, uh, and wheat, and of which milk and eggs uh, expire very, very quickly. Um, and so right now I've got chickens on my farms. I've got bees on my farms. I've got cows on my farm. Uh, I've got everything that I need to be able to make a ton of cakes. The issue that I was having is when these cows, these chickens, these bees, uh, were then when they were making their ingredients, they were actually putting all of the milk and the eggs and stuff in their feed boxes. Feed boxes are where, well, where food gets stored. Um, however, I wanted them to go into the fridge. Uh, I wanted the things to go into the fridge because obviously in the fridge they would expire less. And if you're constantly getting the eggs and stuff thrown into food bas uh, baskets, they're going to expire really quickly. So the trick that I've done, uh, uh, someone in chat told me about this, is that you can put a bunch of non-perishable things. I've got cotton candy here. Cotton candy never expires, and it's also really great because it's not used in any crafting recipes. For example, honey doesn't expire either, but if you put honey in the feed box and then you're making cakes, then that honey can get used, and then all of a sudden, now you've got open slots, uh, and you don't want open slots because if there's no open slots to put them and there's a cooler nearby, then you can put them in the cooler. Uh, or you can just put them in the cooler. Uh, it just helps you keep things uh, stacking and not losing a ton of ingredients uh, during. So you, as you can see, I put berries in the first slot. That way the pals still have food to eat. They still won't like go hungry and stop producing things, but they also aren't going to be putting uh, ingredients in the feed box where they're just going to expire. Uh, and that is how I've done some efficient breeding. I will have a full like in-depth guide on breeding, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, because I've been working on a ton of it myself, but that was one of the big things that helped me. The next thing I wish I knew has to do with expanding the size of your base. Now, one of the most asked questions I get uh, on my YouTube videos are, hey, when you level up your, your PAL box, does your base get bigger? Does the radius increase? The answer to that is no. However, there is a way to actually increase the radius, uh, kind of. Now, the way to do that, uh, if you're playing on a custom server, is turn off degradation uh, of your things. As you can see, uh, basically everything's got a, uh, a, basically like a health bar. Every item's got a health bar. And when you build things outside of your base, that health bar is going to deplete pretty quickly, uh, which means that items that you build, structures that you build will go away uh, eventually. It's just going to happen uh, and they will go away way slower in your actual base. Now, if you turn off degradation, you can actually expand your base a ton. Um, let's say I wanted to build a watchtower uh, or a, um, a, a space for me to sleep or, or anything that you wanted. Uh, this is outside uh, of my base, so obviously I don't get the materials, but I could, for example, like start building a watchtower or something outside of my base which is going to make it feel bigger. Uh, and then I could build things outside the base and expand on it uh, and just keep crafting to make my base feel a lot larger. Now, the one thing that I do want to point out is because you're not in the radius of your base, you do not have access to the resources of the base. So if you're going to build uh, something outside of your base, you're not going to want to build a bunch of workbenches because when you go to craft those things, they're not going to pull from all the resources being stored in your base. What you could do this for is if you wanted to build some houses or a village around the side of your base. If you wanted to build uh, watchtowers, if you just wanted to build more walls or more structures, uh, you can do that and make your base feel a lot bigger. If you've got a house inside of your circle that's taking up a lot of space, you could build it outside the circle. It won't degrade. And then you could have all of your working stuff happening within your base. Uh, you need to turn off item degradation uh, for that to happen uh, if you want to do that. And that's really only something that you can do in custom servers. Uh, but if you are in a like non-public dedicated server, uh, you can do that and it'll make uh, for some pretty cool base building options. Another thing I wish I knew is how to farm PAL fluids efficiently. There's a lot of resources in this game that you need to farm. Um, and PAL fluids are one of them that uh, you could basically only get from water type PALs. Now, if you come over to the Pen King base, uh, this is at coordinates 114, negative 352. Uh, Pen King spawns, and so does a bunch of the little pangolids. Now, these guys drop power fluids, and you can actually come and kill them. Uh, they are always going to be here. They're always going to be in a high concentration. We can kill these pangolids. Um, you can bring a, a pal like Ozerk, which makes water types drop more. You leave the dungeon. Do not kill the big penguin. Enter the dungeon. And voila, 
if once he spawns, there's the pangolets. I can go hit them. I can get tons of ice organs, tons of pal fluids. Uh, and this is simply the most efficient farm uh, for tons and tons of pal fluids. Uh, if you need them, just a little simple trick. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm very curious uh, how many of these you actually did not know. Uh, if you would do me a favor and just let me know down in the comments how many out of the 10 slash 11, I might have done 11, uh, you did not know. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch y'all in the next one. Take care. Peace.